Good morning. I'm Amanda Hayes, and my pronouns are she, her, and I serve as your justice coordinator. Welcome to the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbus. We gather on the land of the Adena, Hopewell, Wyandotte, Miami, Seneca, Erie, and Cayuga people. May this symbolic statement be accompanied by concrete acts of solidarity, healing, and reparation. And now please rise in body or spirit to join me in singing number 1014 in your teal hymnal, standing on the side of love verses one and three. We also invite you to sing a more inclusive version of the wording, we are answering the call of love. I'm Jim Conlon, and I'm happy to serve this congregation as a member of your board of trustees. My pronouns are he, him. Whether you are in person or online, we are happy you're here and want you to know that you belong. First timers are invited to stop by the welcome table out in the gallery to pick up your visitor gift. Uh, announcements, please mark your calendars for Sunday, July 2nd. Uh, the Hope For Us Conflict Transformation Team will be presenting a special Sunday service, and we will be offering a congregational engagement session afterward, where members of our staff team will be sharing their experiences of the past few years. Our former minister of pastoral care, Reverend Isabel Call, will be here in person to be part of both the service and the listening session. See you there. Uh, there is a correction to the nominating announcement that was in Friday news uh, this week, our newly elected members for nominating committee are uh, Judy Vasquez, Glenn Waring, Carla Rinto, Joan Matiscala for a term of one year. Congratulations and thank you to everyone who will be serving on our nominating committee. Uh, scan the QR code now to check in, access the order of service, our donation page, and to submit your joys and sorrows. You can also submit pen and paper joys and sorrows at the candle table in the back corner. Today we are asking folks to let us know what pride means to you. We will share some of your thoughts as part of the caring meditation later in the service. Uh, any children who would like to help bring in the light are invited to meet uh, Gus and Nikki out in the gallery, they're waving back there, uh, as we center ourselves and listen to our prelude.
It is now time for our children to bring in the light. Our chalice lighting words this morning are called Taraxicum, written by queer, non-binary, and Latinx UU minister, Reverend Teresa Soto. <clears throat> Even though they are edible, someone decided that dandelions are weeds, stragglers to destroy, to uproot. But dandelions never got the memo, never thought to care. <laughs> Busy instead with dropping roots, flinging seeds, unfurling shoots, and persistent in digging in that taproot to depths of two or three average adults end to end, the tiny yellow flower survives. You are no less resilient, reaching both down to the strength that holds you and up, up to the light, out with your beauty. And you know, having sunk your effort into the cool, damp earth, that while dandelions can be clipped and fought, uninvested in anyone's opinion, they throw their sparkling futures onto the wind, tomorrow tucked into seeds, and grow all the way back, strong and bowing at the very same time. Thank you, Ezra, for your help lighting our chalice. Good morning. I'm Amber Scott, your director of religious exploration, and my pronouns are she, they. Happy Pride, happy Father's Day, and happy Juneteenth. <clears throat> Due to the holiday weekend, there are no Sunday school classes today. Toddler care is available in room 101. Families with children are invited to take a busy bag from the gallery and explore quiet activities together in the We Worship area or Sloter Lounge. If you need a break from the service, you're always welcome to check out the board games and craft ideas in A and B or to head outside to the playground. Please put away anything you get out once you're finished. Parents and caregivers are responsible for knowing their children's whereabouts at all times and everyone attending the service is asked to please work together to moderate noise while extending grace, compassion, and understanding to one another. Today's story is called Worm Loves Worm and is one of the titles we hope to feature in our youth group's band book library. Written by J.J. Austin and illustrated by Mike Carato. Worm Loves Worm. Let's be married, Worm says to Worm. Yes, answers Worm, let's be married. Wait, says Cricket, you'll need someone to marry you. That's how it's always been done. I'll marry you. Now can we be married, asks Worm. Wait, says Beetle, you've got to have a best Beetle. Naturally, that would be me. Now can we be married, asks Worm. Wait, 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 said the bees. You need bride's bees. Can we be the bride's bees, please, please, please? <laughs> yes, says Worm. Now can we be married? You'll need to get rings to wear on your fingers, says Cricket. That's how it's always been done. But we don't have fingers, says Worm. We can wear them like belts, says Worm. 
Wonderful, says Worm. Now we can be married. Just make sure to have a band so we can dance, says Beetle. But we don't have feet to dance with, says Worm. We can just wiggle around, says Worm, like this. Fun, says Worm. Now we can be married. But you still need a white dress, a tuxedo, a top hat, lots and lots of flowers, and a cake with frosting, said the bees. But we don't have heads for hats, says Worm, or hands to hold flowers. And we only eat dirt, says Worm. <clears throat> Wait, said Spider. I can attach the hat and flowers to you with my sticky web. Thank you, say Worm and Worm. But who will eat the cake, ask the bees. I can eat the cake along with Cricket and Beetle, says Spider. What did you say, asked Cricket and Beetle. Nothing, said Spider with a smile. <laughs> now we can be married, says Worm. But which one of you is the bride, asked the bees. How can we be bride's bees if we don't know who the bride is? I can be the bride, says Worm. I can too, says Worm. But one of you has got to be the groom, or how can I be the best beetle, asks Beetle. I can be the groom, says Worm. I can too, says Worm. We can be both. Amazing, says Spider. Really, asked Beetle and bees. Wait, says Cricket, this isn't how it's always been done. Then we'll just change how it's done, says Worm. Yes, says Worm. And so they were married because Worm loves Worm. <laughs> the end. <clears throat> In this story, Worm and Worm fall in love and explore how to get married like we've always done it. Along with their community, they learn that sometimes we need to find new ways of doing things, especially when it comes to showing and sharing love. I now invite the congregation to form a sheltering arc of love as we sing our young people back to their loved ones.
As we mentioned a little earlier in the service today, in addition to whatever joys and sorrows you might be holding, we're inviting you to reflect on what pride means to you. You are welcome to use the Joys and Sorrows form online to submit your thoughts, and there are also colorful pieces of paper available on the table in the back that you can um, submit with your Joys and Sorrows forms at the candle table. Our centering words this morning are also from Reverend Teresa Soto. Everything is still on fire, despite your best efforts. In addition to living, it is clear that fire or not, you must level up in what it means to thrive right now. That means wrestling with the truth in the fact that everything is not all your fault. I am sorry that everything is still on fire. Once hate catches, the winds of not my problem blow and the blaze is hard to stop. But hard is not impossible. Not yet is different than never. You in community have an answer. You have a response to systems of power and control and to the cost of suffering. You and your community together are the answer. You are not only a people of flame, but also a people of cold, clear truth. You know both where you fall short and where you flourish and where you still reach. Everything is still on fire, but all is not lost. You remain more nimble than steadfast, more unshakable than swayed by the latest rage. You are here to put out the ravenous flames and heal the world. Enough is enough. So tomorrow is Juneteenth. And on June 19th, 1865, two years after the freedom or Emancipation Proclamation was issued, the U.S. Army arrived in Galveston, Texas to announce and enforce the proclamation in the last place in the United States where black people were still enslaved. The very next year was the first annual Jubilee Day celebration with parades, cookouts, prayer gatherings, and music. In 1968, the Reverend Ralph Abernathy called Juneteenth solidarity in the Poor People's Campaign. By 2016, 45 states had recognized Juneteenth. 
and two years ago, Congress passed a law to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. A Texas woman, Opal Lee, is considered the grandmother of Juneteenth. Her activism helped it become a national holiday. And she states, we can't be satisfied with having Juneteenth made into law. We've got joblessness, homelessness, health care, and climate change. Freedom isn't something just for black people to celebrate. I'd like to see our country celebrate freedom from Juneteenth to the 4th of July. Being free includes stable housing, health care, a job with a living wage, and addressing climate change. Structural racism, as well as hetero cis normativity and many other isms, are built into our American cultural and economic systems. And queer and trans people of color are impacted by an intersection of these systemic oppressions. The same queer and trans people who led the six days of protest in 1969 that we now call Stonewall, which is the cornerstone of many pride events in the United States. Um, in 2017, four black, trans, and queer community members here in Columbus, wanting to draw attention to these broader issues, decided to stop and take a knee during the Stonewall Columbus Pride Parade here. They sought just a few minutes of silence to recognize the lack of safe spaces in our city for black and brown LGBTQ QIA plus people. Instead, they were immediately arrested by city police, and when charges were filed against them, the Stonewall Pride organizers didn't resist or protest. This led to a split in the Columbus queer community and to black, queer, and intersectional collective organizing a celebration to separ separate from the Stonewall Pride Parade. Their celebration of community pride became an annual celebration from 2018 to the present and will be celebrated in the fall this year. I wonder how we might connect with community pride as a church this year. We thought we might have a video to share from Black Queer and Intersectional Collective, or Be Quick, this morning, but understandably, Pride Month is a busy time for Be Quick and it didn't end up working out for this service. We appreciate the work of Stonewall Pride Parade organizers have done to celebrate LGBTQIA pride, and we grieve the break in our community. We honor the community pride organizers for stepping up to create a space that was sorely needed in our city. And we wonder what it will take for the LGBTQIA community in Columbus as a whole to center black and brown, queer and trans people so that we can all work together for true freedom. And now, um, in hope and in honor of Juneteenth, please join me in singing the traditional African-American spiritual, We Shall Overcome.
Good morning. My name is Kristen Harbin, and my pronouns are she, her. I've been asked today to give you a reflection on pride. And so the first thing I have to say is that visibility is a hell of a thing. As a femme, that is, as the kind of cisgendered queer woman who looks most like skirt, the way society often believes that straight women should look, I have often been invisible. I have walked by people who hated my kind unmolested, passing like a spy, slicing like a knife through crowds that would do me harm. Karen in Potentia with my pearls and my lipstick. But I've also been passed by my people who look at me and think other, slicing into me like a knife from crowds that I would welcome. Karen in Potentia with my pearls and my lipstick. But visibility is often so vulnerable for all my people who do not accidentally hide as well as I do. For my gender non-conforming wife, my non-binary friends, my trans cousin, Every day, they face a world that looks at them with, at best, polite incomprehension, and at worst, visceral disgust. Karen, in actuality, with pearls and lipstick, sneering. Here and now in Columbus, we celebrate with visibility. We encourage our community to make itself visible for this, our holy month, of rage, joy, grief, pride. We drape ourselves in the various combinations of the brightest colors imaginable to say, see us as we are. Our collective joy shines. Our masked presence glitters. Our visibility is a perpetual challenge to your bigotry. I honor all my brothers and sisters my siblings who are visible, voluntarily or not, today and all days. I love you. Our visibility and our being seen, this too is holy. Hello, I am Ricky Wagoner, and my pronouns are she, her. One of my touchstone songs was written by the great theologian and reluctant rock and roll hall of famer, Todd Rundgren. It's called Change Myself from his Second Wind album. I'm not going to sing any of it because I just don't have the voice, but I will quote from it. I want to change the world. I want to make it well. How can I change the world when I can't change myself? Try again tomorrow. Trans persons as well as the rest of our community are the current low-hanging fruit to the media. Since my surgery, I've kind of had to become a consumer of that media, and I don't look at the direct sources because I don't want to give them the clicks. But I've seen enough to know that they will misdirect, beg the question, and be willfully ignorant and quote their own reliable research. Yes. <laughs> when Todd talks about conquering the citadel in the song, he's talking about our intellectual honesty of what is really going on and what we show the world. We have to be better than the forces raised against us. They may call our pride a sin, but our pride is the antithesis of shame. We feel good and confident, not boastful. We can break barriers with our friends and allies and being the better people. If I want to change the world, 
if I'm sorry, if I want more peace in the world, then I must make peace with myself. If I want more trust in the world, I've got to trust more in myself. If I want more love in the world, I must show more love to myself. And if you want to listen to the song, I will play it in Beach Hall later, but <laughs> thank you all. Please rise and body your spirit and join me in singing number 118 in your gray hymnal, the African-American spiritual, This Little Light of Mine, verses one and three. First off, I'm not Lauren. My name's Greg Cody. I go by he, him, he. Um, it says pride reflections. You cannot reflect on the pride today that you sit within without recognizing what that came before you. In 1924, a group of people decided that they deserved to be recognized as individuals and human beings. And the Society for Human Rights was formed. In 1950, the Madioc Society was formed in their white dresses, suits, and quiet protest on the streets with their signs, trying to be respected, gained a place at the table quietly, fall, trying to fall into what America wanted, trying to find a crack that they could find a way in. After that, in 1955, the daughters of the Bolitas and I know, I know I'm not saying that correctly, the lesbian organizations decided that they too deserved a place at the table. Slowly it happened. However, in 1987, well actually in 1969, excuse me, the first brick was thrown through the world and Stonewall decided to take it a, a different approach. Finally, they said enough is enough persecution, hate, oppression, violence was not going to happen anymore. Stonewall changed the world by throwing the first brick. And personally, I would say it was probably a stiletto, but I'm not one to gossip. <laughs> <laughs> However, in 1987, everything that came forward was destroyed with the, with the AIDS epidemic. It gave America an, ex an excuse to dismantle all that came before, to use a disease as a way to control. However, through understanding history and what came before us, and understanding that we were no longer fighting for a place at the table, but we were fighting for our lives, that we decided ACT UP was formed. Not me, I wasn't involved. I wasn't even in town on that weekend. <laughs> However, they changed my world. I have been HIV positive for 37 years. I stand here prideful because of the people that came before me. I recognize their journey. As you sit here understanding that you sit in proud moments, whatever they may be, there was a fight that came before you. There was a group of people who decided that you were worthy enough in your moment today that they were going to put their lives on the line. 
Pride to me is a reflection of all that came before me. I can never hold a candle, a light, a flame to the people that came before me, but I sure can hold a candle to the people that come behind me. You too, as an individual who sits here, whatever proudful moment you have, know that there is somebody that came before you and you are the light that comes behind you. Happy Pride. Um, our next song is We Are a Gentle, Angry People, number 170. Please join and rise as you are willing and able. This is a song written by Holly Near in the wake of the Harvey Milk assassination, and it's a call to action. It demands that we make sure everyone knows who we are and how many we are. We who will not be moved, we who are scared, angry, loving, and resisting. Oh yeah, we're doing verse one and two. Thank you. Thank you. Kim Raderstorff, and I go by she and her. I'm so happy to be back here today. You know, when you get older, there, there's a term now that they give us older folks. That's trailblazers. <laughs> those, are, those are the people that came out in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And, um, you know, I really wanted to speak today just to express gratitude to this congregation. Um, you know, I came out in, in around 1982, and one of the first experiences I had was to come to this, to come to a conference here um, for gay people, and it was called um, Embracing the Exile, which kind of means like you're shit out of luck, you know. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, things have gotten a whole lot better. Um, in, 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 in my time, and, and I'm so grateful for that, and I'm so grateful to this congregation. Um, you know, I met, at that conference, I met Eric DeBreer, I met Bob Rice, um, and we formed a group called This Way Out. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was a way for gay people to come out. Um, there were people like Pat and Kay. Kay went on to become a, a Unitarian minister and had a church on the East Coast. Bob and Jack, and then when Jack died, Bob and Steve, Chris and Shirley. Um, Suzanne and I were married here in 1989. Frank Rivas did the ceremony over in Fellowship Hall. That was even before this was built. Um, when our two sons were born, Keith and David, they're now grown, but we dedicated them here. Um, gosh, what else did we do here? About everything. When, when they got to SYC, um, we went to, they, they were here for SYC. I taught at SYC while, the, while they were growing up. And you know, I'm, I'm really proud that, that we were able to do these things, that Suzanne and I were able to do these things together. I have to give a lot of credit to this congregation and your open-mindedness. Um, you know, you were there for me in the 1980s when no other church was. Um, 
And, and I truly, I just wanted to express that gratitude from the bottom of my heart. The other great thing about being older is that you get to see, it's kind of like what goes around comes around kind of thing, but you get to see the goodness that you gave out come back to you. And that's what I wish for this congregation, that the goodness that you embraced all of us in the gay community with, that it comes around and keeps coming back to you. Glad to be here today. Thank you. Hello and good morning. My name is Ivy and my pronouns are they, she. I identify as omnisexual, demisexual, demiromantic, and I am a demigirl. Some people think as pride as just a word or just a feeling. I see it as, as a community, a community that I feel welcome in, a community that has given me friends, a community that has made me me, I hope more and more people will feel safe enough to come out and that they will feel accepted and loved and that they will be themselves and live the life they want. I hope we will continue getting more um, representation in the media. This is a great community to be a part of and I'm so happy that I am. We're on a path to a better future and we will never stop growing and getting better. May all those who identify as part of this community find love, support, and happiness. Thank you. Please rise in body and, or spirit and join me in singing number 153 in our gray hymnal, the African American spiritual, Oh, I Woke Up This Morning, verses one and three. morning. My name is Reverend Kathleen Fowler and my pronouns are she and her and I am privileged to serve as your minister of pastoral care. This morning I present to you the wisdom of Reverend Teresa Soto. I cannot prove to you that I am, we are, human. I cannot prove to you that I am a person but you can hold my hand cool and dry while we pray, or just breathe, ragged breaths catching in our aching ribs. I cannot prove to you that brown skin is holy, that black skin is sacred, but you can know it, luminous and irrepressible, the tabernacle of your own liberation. I cannot even prove to you that every queer body, every trans and ending body, every ace and bisexual body sings back to the universe its immense generative power of yes. I cannot prove to you with quadratic certainty that what a disabled body holds is a story of wisdom beyond perfection, like a red sun emerging 
from behind a cloud of dust. So the answers that I have for a country hacking up a death rattle and a democracy with a wheezing, waxy pallor are about our courage to love, our desperation not only for the survival, but also to tread above the worst of our collective nature and to get each other free, unashamed that there comes a day when we were willing to risk looking foolish to simply stay together and alive. This morning, we hold up Happy Father's Day, a day to honor one's father, our relevant father figure, as well as paternal bonds and the influence of fathers in society. The first Father's Day was celebrated on June 19, 1910. A beloved thank you to all fathers and to all who play this role in society today. We hold up the celebration of Juneteenth, the day when the last enslaved people in the U.S. learned that they were free. For generations, black Americans have recognized the end of one of the darkest chapters in the U.S. with their joy in the form of parades, street festivals, musical performances, or cookouts. We hold up the joy of celebrating Pride Month and the joy in the hearts of 700,000 who celebrated yesterday at the Columbus Pride Parade. <laughs> This is the second largest pride parade in the Midwest, behind only Chicago. Yet along with this celebration, we acknowledge the contentious political climate that seeks to ban drag shows, prohibit gender-affirming care, ban books, limit how teachers can talk about sexuality and gender in the classroom, all alongside the threat of gun violence and hate-motivated violence. May we always remember that standing together, we are stronger. And Pat, Lars, uh, Pat uh, Snyder is here, our pastor listener for this morning. And after I read the joys and sorrows that you have submitted online, or if you have submitted this week, Pat will read the ones submitted since the start of the service. So we have two announcements this morning. Um, one, I have some very difficult news to share, and that is Paula Egbert's husband, Bill Egbert, died this morning at 2.30 in the morning while in hospice care after a valiant struggle against cancer. And may we just take a moment of silence. Thank you. Um, the card for Paula will be next week. <clears throat> Our other announcement this morning is David John Crone will perform Dance Out Loud when I first started dancing at the New Albany Dance Festival on July 28th. He writes, I'll tell my story while dancing. It's all American dance. If you're tired of princes and swans, come and see some real American modern dance. And we have three cards available to be signed in Beach Hall this morning. Sue and Fred V. celebrated their 65th wedding anniversary yesterday on Saturday the 17th. Congratulations. <laughs> and we announced last week that uh, Laurel L. tested positive for COVID fell down the stairs, breaking her wrist and ribs and part of her neck. Uh, and as I reported, she's now in OSU Neuro Clinic, um, welcoming cards, but no calls right now, to, uh, cards to her home address. So her card is now available this morning to be signed. And Michelle Miles fell down some stairs um, recently and sustained sprains, strains, and pains. So her card is also available to be signed. 
And now Pat will read the joys and sorrows that you have submitted since the start of this service. Well, I'm happy to follow up with two joys. One from Kristen H., who says, my summer job is going well. My students are getting valuable work experience. So congratulations to Kristen and her students. And also from Marilyn W., who wants to honor all fathers today and says, happy Father's Day. And may we hold these joys and sorrows and all of those yet unspoken gently in our hearts. And let us take a few moments this morning to center ourselves. Thank you. More words from Reverend Teresa Soto. America is this freedom. The day we are in is not unprecedented entirely. America has been unjust before, has ignored both its laws and what higher law the soul can sense that each person is a human, and as a human, it turns out that their life and their body belongs expressly to them. That is, if they come for my queer body, I will resist. For totalitarianism to thrive, there must be an enemy created. We have watched as queers, as trans and non-binary folk, and our black and brown neighbors, workers, have been made into the wanted poster unwanted faces. The mild reaction of many people I would have trusted communicates clearly that they see no danger and that I should wait until it gets bad. America, your sickness makes me sit and weep. We will rise, of course, but will it be enough? The babies are already in cages. Is that not your alarm? Are you not awake, bolt upright? Your trans kin are stuck, struggling to navigate systems that actively exert the power to define them out of existence, to deny travel documents, health care. America is this freedom. Who is free? All is not lost, but some is gone the part of society that could assume that being decent was enough of an expectation to keep us civil is discovering that disconnected from values, any practice can be destructive. The time to politely look away as though cruelty is merely somewhat impolite expired some time back. We must get free. Do something to be faithful. Do something to interrupt evil. Do not wait, do it now. The time we have left for collecting courage and dealing in compassion is not unlimited, but this is still your day. Move into it in your power and your love. In June, we are sharing our offering plate with Kaleidoscope Youth Center. 
Founded in 1994, KYC is Ohio's most prominent and longest running organization solely dedicated to serving queer youth. Kaleidoscope works to provide a safer place along with programming and leadership opportunities so that youth can be free to explore who they are and feel empowered to become their confident, most authentic selves. Your gifts help build a better church and a better world. Our offering will now be gratefully received. Thank you. As a reminder, as you leave the service today, we invite you to write what pride means to you or your hopes for the future on a strip of paper, which we will add to our paper chain back in the back of the sanctuary here. Once again, we've got some more words from the prophetic Reverend Teresa Soto from her book, Spilling the Light, Meditations on Hope and Resilience. To the people who have mistaken freedom for liberation, to be free, you must embrace the breadth of your own existence without apology, even if they try to take it from you. You must know not that you can do whatever you want. You are not a kudzu vine eating entire hillsides for the purpose of feeding your own lush life. You must know instead that inside you are entire universes, milky blue, magenta, and gold expanding. But to actually be free, you must know, and you must fight for the entire universes inside of everyone else. Being free is not a license, but a promise. Our closing hymn is, we're gonna sit at the welcome table Number 407 in your gray hymnal, we're singing verses one and two. Please rise in body and, or spirit and join me.
join hands with your neighbor as we read our congregation's vision statement and extinguish our chalice flame together. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of vision. As we go forth, let us heal and transform ourselves and our world through reason and love. Yeah. 